firstly, Ansel, walk me through having to learn Japanese for this project. <laughs> no, it was such a cool thing to have to do, you know, a great challenge. Um, luckily, got to work with Michael Mann. So he, he loves to work people so much and he, he wants it to, you know, he works really hard himself. I think he's up at 6 a.m., going to sleep at midnight, never stops working. So initially, he recommended that I study Japanese nine hours a day. Um, and well, Alan Poole. So yeah. <laughs> it's Alan Poole. What, what most difficult in, uh, in the world of a language in Japanese? It was pretty difficult, but luckily, you know, I would go and like, for example, Ken invited me to his house in Karuizawa and I would try to speak to him in Japanese and he would answer me in English, just kind of like our characters in the show. And I always wanted to practice as much as possible. Um, and, you know, being in Japan and being in Tokyo, it was very immersive experience. So at the same time, those that nine hours a day of Japanese turned into four hours a day, which was still pretty good. And then when I wasn't in class, I was around uh, a lot of Japanese people and trying to speak as much as I could, even making mistakes, but and, and also learning the lines. Um, you know, that was great because sometimes I would I would learn lines like tobacco uh, suitemoidoska, can I smoke? You know, that I remember going to a bar and saying it so smoothly, tobacco suitemoidoska, you know what I mean? Thinking I was so cool because I had my lines memorized and they thought I was better than I was. And then they would speak to me in regular Japanese and I couldn't really speak, you know. But Skoshizutsu, little by little, I've been, you know, getting better at Japanese and it's been a great challenge. And I realized it was important for the role because I wanted to have a little more freedom when I was acting. And that's great. And it's really cool how it reflects your actual characters and the plot of the show. Like that's, that's really cool. Have you since been able to impress anyone with your skills speaking Japanese, like, you know, ordering food like back at, uh, back in America, uh, expressing anyone with your fluency? I always try, but for example, I went to a Japanese uh, um, teriyaki chicken restaurant and I tried to say, uh, sama which is thank you for the food. And they said, oh, sorry, we're Korean. <laughs> so everywhere I go, I try to speak Japanese and uh, not nobody is Japanese. So I have to go back to Japan. That's, that's too funny. Uh, uh, Ken, were you impressed with, with how fluent he became? Uh, you know, just, we also have a uh, relationship is uh, really sensitive. You know, beginning, I didn't trust him. What are you doing in the underground with a cop or so, something? Then story by story, episode by episode, we have uh, cro closer to distance uh, to, to finally as a bond of connecting. Then, and I will, uh, it's a first, at first, uh, I could not teach anything, but I receive about the passion of Jake. Then I will teach about something underground feelings and the scary situation and uh, cops feelings or something. And then finally, yeah, we could, we could have a good relationship. Yeah. That's great. And the real unbelievable part of this whole project is that it's based on a true story. Have you, either of you met the real Jake? Yeah, twice. Uh, he, he came to set twice. And then I asked you about uh, uh, how could you take a relationship with them? And then uh, uh, what, is, uh, what is the cops feeling or something? And then <clears throat> cop uh, has a good family and then uh, good faces, face of the husband and uh, uh, father, and then uh, gentle and uh, speaking a really soft voice or something. But approach to the gangs is so strictly strong and uh, scary. And then uh, uh, it's a real detective. And then it's, uh, we change uh, kind of double faces. Then 
maybe same thing to approach to the Jake. And the first time to meet him and just really keep the distance and strong and mysterious. Uh, but time by time to open open the mind and then uh, it's a take a great uh, good relationship and a friendship. Yeah. That's amazing. Ansel, did he have any advice uh, for playing him? And was there a part of his story that, I mean, there are some crazy parts of it, obviously. Was there something uh, in particular that really got you excited to take on this role? Um, well, okay, first about Jake. Yeah, it was, he took me along with him while he investigated the story about there was a father who had murdered his son and that was just the report. Now, the, that day, he wanted to write about it. So uh, there, and it was going to trial and there was gonna be a verdict that day. So he, in, in true Jake style, he had no credentials. He wasn't even technically writing for any paper, but he just, we just kind of walked into this place. He snuck us in as far as we could go, talked our way in, which is so Jake. And then we, we couldn't get into the courtroom though. So we waited right outside. He said, don't worry, we'll wait outside the courtroom. We'll stand next to the other reporters. And when the verdict comes out, this, see that woman right there? She's a TV reporter. So when the verdict comes out, they're going to run over to her and tell her the verdict. And we'll know it, you know, 20 seconds after everyone else knows it. So we don't even need to be in there. No problem. And he starts just listening in, writing, taking down notes. Then he sneaks us into some other room where the jurors are in there and they interview the jurors. And it, it was like, so Jake, first of all, it was great just learn, you know, seeing how you could you know, just reporting on crime, but also seeing how this is how Jake Adelstein did it. He's breaking all the rules. He is doing it his own way, but he's still getting it done. Um, so I took that for, for my character of, you know, I'm playing this guy who does not always follow the rules, but he's going for truth and justice. Um, and uh, yeah, but to, to follow, to answer your other question, for me, you know, Tokyo Vice, the main thing was just Tokyo. I just knew I wanted to do something in Tokyo because visually the city is so, it's such a great character that no matter what, that's, that element is going to be great. Um, then I read the book and I thought, wow, th what an interesting, funny, uh, shocking and, and uh, unexpected. Like I didn't realize, you know, the, it's such a different world, um, Japan from America. Um, the way that things are done are different. And as an audience member, you know, as a reader of the book, and then when people watch the show, they're going to find that very interesting. Um, and then on top, and then the last thing was Michael Mann and Ken Watanabe, of course. So to be able to work with these legends um, was just like, okay, this is going to be a great project. 